Hey Pokemon fans, YouTube, and my faithful subscribers, I've got another deck analysis for you today. Uh, today we're doing a, a very competitive deck. I expect this deck will probably be played in many of the nationals and uh, if not all of them and you may even see variants of this at worlds um, so today we're looking at trevenant shaman ex so trevenant uh the psychic type not to be confused with the ex and shaman ex all right so let's just take a look at trevenant obviously phantom is the basic and it evolves into trevenant trevenant has the ability forest curse as long as this pokemon is your active pokemon your opponent can't play any item cards from his or her hand all right so this is another lock deck um i personally think it's better than seismitoad uh though i'm sure there are people that would argue with me on this however um Trevenant can hit harder than Seismitoad. Now he takes a little bit more energy and he does take an evolution. Uh, but the ability to lock your opponent on turn one is just, it's really awesome. I mean, you just, you just can't, uh, uh, that's just so much better than what Seismitoad can do. To be able to, if you start and get a Wally and then take Trevenant, to stage one, you know, get Trevenant out on turn one. It's just almost heartbreaking. And I'm not a big fan of lock decks, but when you're playing in a tournament, you've got to play what wins. And this deck has a great potential to go far into tournaments. Uh, the tree slam is his attack. And this is the attack we mostly uh, we'll be focusing on though shaman could attack if we needed to and there's actually variants where shaman does all the attacking and then once you sky return shaman then you put trevenant up and then you have a float stone on trevenant but i prefer because shaman's only going to hit for 50 with a muscle band i prefer to be hitting for 80 plus hitting the bench for 20 and this is also the reason why i don't do like a gengar trevenant uh, combo because Gengar can't hit any harder than Trevenant can. Now he can poison them, but we're going to be playing Hypnotoxic Lasers anyway, so they'll be poisoned anyway. Uh, I should say Gengar can poison them, uh, but with Hypnotoxic Lasers, we can do as much damage as Gengar can, and yet we can still hit the bench. So now the downside to all this is Trevenant only has 110 HP, so he can be one one hit knocked out a lot easier. Uh, and that's why you got to constantly have more Trevenants ready to go on the bench. But this deck plays fast. Uh, it's it's really good. Uh, let me get on to some of the other stuff, and then we'll get into why it's so good uh, momentarily. All right, so we play the four Shaman. Now, Shaman is our draw engine. Uh, you've seen Seismitoad Slurpuff, where Slurpuff uses the tasting ability and you can draw cards. They've now, most Seismitoads have gone to a Seismitoad Shaman, and it just makes sense for Trevenant to go there too. Because with Shaman as your draw engine, uh, you can constantly be pulling crushing hammers. Uh, hypnotoxic lasers, head ringers, muscle bands, you can get everything you need through the shaman draw engine and not have to worry about supporters as much. The other thing about shaman is you can actually use the sky return attack. Uh, you can attach a double colorless energy and put a muscle band and hit for 50, bring all that back into your hand and then reattach it put it down next turn draw some more cards reattach it and that's a viable strategy with this deck but as i mentioned before i'd like i like to hit hard and i also like to put damage on the bench so i prefer to charge up trevenant now it does take an extra turn to get him charged up but i think it's worth it if you feel like you want to go a different route 
by all means. Uh, matter of fact, this is just uh, a starting point for you guys. This is more of a vanilla build. I know some people that take in Raichu just to go against Mega Rayquaza, and that's probably a good idea because Mega Rayquaza is fast and can hit hard. So you may want to consider this, consider Raichu tech. But as far as this build, we're just kind of keeping it vanilla. Uh, and, you know, we can go, you can go from there. All right, so we play the four Shaman and we have one Jirachi. And ideally, we want to try to get into a Jirachi on turn one if we can. That is, if we haven't drawn into Wally, because Jirachi can grab Wally for us on turn one. And we don't need as many draw supporters because Shaman's here. So uh, use Jirachi, Stellar's Guidance, and then we grab Wally. And we're playing two Wallys in this deck. When you grab Wally, you can uh, go straight to Trevenant on turn one and item lock your opponent. So think about this. You've got all these items that you're playing with. Your opponent doesn't. The only thing, when you think about it, the only thing your poke, your opponent has is Pokemon, Stadiums, Energy, and Supporters. When you item, and then when we play three Crushing Hammers, which is meant to deny Energy, one in, uh, one Enhanced Hammer, one Team Flare Grunt, and two Headringers, we are totally keeping energy we're trying to keep energy off the board so we're going to get several attacks before they even can get enough energy to play and ideally if we can keep energy completely off the board for them then we've won so we're going to be denying them energy and we're going to be denying them uh, items however we need some extra damage output so that's where hypnotoxic laser comes in and this also can cause your opponent not to attack uh, for a turn if they fall asleep. So Hypnotoxic Laser poisons them, then you flip a coin and if heads, you uh, also cause your opponent's active Pokemon to go to sleep. Uh, and then if they flip tails on the sleep, then they have to use some kind of switching card to get out, but they don't have items, so they usually can't switch out unless they have Keldeo or some other way to to get out of the sleep maybe a pokemon center lady uh but the big thing for hypnotoxic laser is that it poisons them and it gives us extra damage now we combine that with verbank city which does two more damage counters in between turns for poison so now when we hit with trevenant we hit 60 then we also use a muscle band that gives us 80 you throw in the laser and we're doing 110 coming back to us is 140 uh, and then really even if we don't hit them if they're still poison 170 is going to knock out most EX's but uh, 140 plus 80 is 220 and 30 250 you're knocking out megas uh, so almost everything is a two hit knockout for us and some of the smaller Pokemon stage ones and basics are one hit knockout for us so that's what makes this deck so powerful uh, some of the other item cards we have we have super scoop up now uh, we're using for our a spec computer search and that's just because I don't have a super scoop up online uh, but I'm not a super scoop up, a scoop up cyclone a spec which automatically allows you to scoop uh, Pokemon from your bench and then you can scoop up the shaman and then play it back down so we're playing four super scoop ups so that we can hopefully get the shaman and replay them and uh, and get the more draw draw more cards however when you play super scoop up you have to remember that you have to flip a coin uh, and if it's heads, then you can scoop up the Shaman. Otherwise, you know, it, it's a dead card for us. I play one town map just so that if we have some, some serious stuff prized, we know wh which what it is, and we can grab it. We have Trainer's Mail, and this is just, I still think this is a really awesome card. I know there's still debate on this, but to be able to look at four 
cards of your deck, the top four cards, and pick any trainer card from it. If you don't have a supporter, you can get a supporter. If you need a hypnotoxic laser or a muscle band or whatever, uh, most likely, especially in a deck like this, those four top cards are going to have something that you need. And so this card is just invaluable in this deck, and I personally think in every deck. Ultra Ball, so that we can get Jirachi, or we can get Shaman. We probably will not be using Ultra Ball much to get Phantoms or Trevenants, though that's always a possibility. We usually draw into those, so we ha so that's a possibility. Um, we have VS Seeker, and we play three of those. We have a very small supporter line, which I'll get to. So it's important that we play three, and if you could even fit it in, four wouldn't hurt, uh, just so that you can keep reusing uh, supporters that have already been played. As I mentioned before, we use Verbank along with the Hypnotoxic Laser. We use the Enhanced Hammer, so if they're using Special Energy, we have that available. And then the three crush Crushing Hammers. Uh, I mentioned this, the head ringer, but just for those of you that don't know, you can attach this to um, the attacks of this, um, of the Pokemon require an extra colorless energy. You can only attach it to an EX, but just for instance, let's say you're playing Evil Tall. Um, if you attach this to Evil Tall, he attaches a dark energy, you crushing hammer it away. He's still looking at two turns before he can power up. Uh, so, and it may be even three if he's not playing any any um, d double colorless, which that's very rare. But if they do play double colorless, then we can enhance hammer it off, and then he's got to start over again. So, all of that is stuff to keep in mind. Um, all right, let's look at the supporter line and then we'll get to our energy and then we'll pretty much be done with this deck analysis and I'll have some battles for you coming up in the near future. All right, so our draw support is very small. We're playing two Sycamore and you're like, whoa, what happened to four Sycamores? We don't want our supporters to clog our hand up because Shaman is our draw engine more than anything. But it's always nice that if we need to get a fresh seven, we have that available. And um, I, I forgot to mention, but we use Battle Compressor. And this is primarily used to put supporters in the discard pile. So if we need that Wally, or if we need Professor Sycamore or in or Lysander's trump card or Lysander or whatever we're using We can put that in the discard pile and then draw into it with a VS seeker So we play the two Sycamore we play one in uh, Just in is just valuable especially if you get behind in the game you can uh, Deny your opponent cards we play the Lysander's Trump card because this deck does play fast, and we want to be able to reuse our crushing hammers, our enhanced hammers, and our lasers. So Lysander's Trump card helps us. We play one Lysander. Now, I usually love to have more than just one of these, but again, because we don't want to clog our deck up, we just play one, and then we have the three VS Seekers. So potentially we could use him four times. Well, with Lysander's Trump card, we could use him as many times as we needed it needed to all right we also have team flare grunt discard an energy attached to your opponent's active pokemon just another energy denial card we're just trying to keep energy off the board so we can start uh, knocking out the opponents before they even get a chance to attack us um wally as i mentioned before this allows you to evolve one of your pokemon except not EXs and put it onto that Pokemon. So that's how we can go from a Phantom to a Trevenant on turn one and item lock our opponent before they've even had a turn. I, mean, I don't know if I mentioned the muscle bands, but we play two muscle bands. And then finally, for our energy, we play four DCE and four Mystery Energy. I know that uh, we're, we could possibly get. Uh, enhanced hammered but uh, I haven't had much trouble and remember we're item locking them so they really can't do much unless they have like a team flare grunt so we're not really worried about that too much 
anyway, got anyway, guys. I hope you like the deck. Uh, hit like, subscribe, and feel free to give me any comments. I know some people don't like these kind of decks, but they are very competitive. Anyway, I'll catch you later, and let me know what other decks you want me to highlight.